Guys, this Turkish dish is on my rotation list. I have to do this again because it came out so freaking good. Coming up next, I'm going to show you how we can take a beautiful Turkish street food into the home. And we're going to make what's called tantani. This is their version of a steak wrap that uses lavash bread, fresh condiments, and beautiful ingredients. For the recipe, head on over to kcknh.com. You can find both Big Dog and I on Facebook and Instagram. I'm over on YouTube, and he's over on Indeed.com. So be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Now, last time we did make a beautiful dressing with the dark cherry bourbon sauce, specifically for the tantini. And in Turkey, this is one of many dishes you can find for classic street foods. The aromas, the flavors certainly draw people in from all around the world to experience this. Tantini is actually cooked outdoors on a very large kamal. In the middle, it's cooking salted boiled beef and it's being made right there in front of the customer with the fresh ingredients and wrap to go. Most of the ingredients can be found locally, but you may need to consider finding a Middle Eastern shop that features a variety of Middle Eastern spices. And as you can see here, this is just a breakdown of what we're using for condiments, herbs, spices. We're playing with some ideas around sumac, cumin, beautiful flavors like za'atar, it really is a very easy recipe to pull together, guys. So don't be intimidated by this. And let me know if I can help recommend some sites for you to purchase some of these beautiful spices if you need. So right away, we're gonna go into prepping the vegetables. I've got onions, tomatoes here that we're just making them into small dice, uh, small bite-sized pieces. Certainly you wanna make sure they're as consistent in your cuts as possible. But the real key here is we're going to hit these vegetables with sumac and you want this to have a chance to rest. The sumac is going to offer a light citrusy, almost a, an alternative to salt, believe it or not. It's very gentle, but very fragrant. So here's what sumac looks like. It's this beautiful dark red. And we're just going to hit the tomatoes and onions with this to start. It's always easy to just do a little bit at a time. And then at the end, you can determine, eh, it might need a little more. Now, I am using a combination of parsley and cilantro. Typically for this dish, it would just be parsley. So for those that don't like cilantro, you could do all parsley. So it's certainly very flexible. And here we're just making sure that the sumac is coating everything. And I'm noticing here that it might need another hit of more sumac, so I'll be putting a little bit more in here. And again, just mix this well, and you can actually set this aside or put it in the fridge while you're prepping everything else. And if you taste test this, it is going to have a whole different flavor profile than you're probably used to, but it's so delicious and it's actually very refreshing. Look at the colors here. Who wouldn't want that, guys, you know? So now we're moving on to the steak. We're doing small bite-sized pieces. Uh, try to keep your cuts as consistent as possible, guys. Uh, ultimately, we're going to be hitting this with the pan, high heat, and we want to make sure that everything cooks as evenly as possible. And into that same bowl, I'm putting in garlic. Honest to God, you have got to try a heavy hit of garlic every now and then. If you're going to do it, it's going to be this dish. <laughs> I love garlicky beef. I'm a sucker for it. There's so many countries out there that love their garlic fix. I swear to God, I'm moving. I'm going to move. And I'm going to go to those countries and say, thank you. I will take that extra garlic hit. <laughs> so right into the same bowl, we're going to add some za'atar. A little hint about za'atar. Sometimes you got to stir it up a bit uh, because it does separate. It has sesame seeds in there, so if you're allergic to sesame, you don't want to use this. You could do a heavy hit of za'atar if you want, uh, but just make sure you find some that doesn't have sesame. Now we're going to add a little onion powder. This is a nice mixture of savory going here, because when you add it to the vegetables that are in the sumac, you get your citrusy, you'll have your slight salt, and then with that 
dark cherry bourbon dressing I made, that's your replacement for pomegranate molasses. That's gonna give you your sweet, savory kick. And it's gonna be awesome. So now uh, into this bowl, we've got a combination of spices going in. It looks like it's pretty heavy, but that's okay. This is actually what we want because we're gonna toss it. And we're gonna make sure that this is coated as evenly as possible. And the beauty of this, now I did not want to do salted boiled meat. I'm just not a fan of, of meat being boiled with salt, to be very truthful. Uh, so I'm using what is considered the salt already in some of these spices. It hits the pan with some olive oil and it's going to have its own moisture. So instead of like water soaked meat, which is disgusting, I think. <laughs> We're going to get this moisture here all from the cooking process. So we're actually retaining the integrity and the flavor of this beef beautifully. So we're dealing with medium high heat. This is something you have to stay at the stove, guys. You cannot let that sit. Automatically, we're going to toss this around. I want the heat to hit everything. And the aromas are going to hit you and it's just going to be this beautiful medley. You're gonna love it. You're gonna find yourself really inhaling. <laughs> There's nothing more beautiful than a variety of spices, I have to tell you. And it's important, taste your food, guys. You just saw me take a little piece of the beef. I'm making sure that we have enough spices in this because clearly after cooking, sometimes it'll change. So I'm just hitting it with a couple pinches more as a tar. And you don't wanna go crazy on it because it can certainly be overwhelming as well. And you can see that we're now shutting off the heat. This beef is cooked to the way I like, and that's also your decision. Uh, certainly cook it to your liking, uh, and that'll be something that makes it very important. It's gonna be your own. So here we've got some lavash bread. We're gonna start loading up on some fresh wild greens here. I love lettuce, but I like the wild green mix. It tastes so much better for me. And, uh, I'm a little particular when it comes to that. I got my onions and tomatoes with the herbs and the sumac. You can see the beautiful pink color on the onions from the sumac. It's beautiful. So you put a nice even layer there. And of course, you're going to hit it up with the steak tips that you cooked. See all the fluids there? That's all coming from the steak itself and the olive oil that we put in the pan. Um, I really found that we didn't have to salt boil it. It actually created its own juices and all naturally. And so now that we've got this all set up, we're gonna hit this with the dressing, which is a separate video, guys. Uh, be on the lookout because that requires Big Dog Sauce Company's newest sauce, the dark cherry bourbon. Let's get a nice up close shot of this sandwich and that gorgeous steak. The sauce is beautifully coating this. It's not even watery, guys. That's what you want for that sauce. And finally, let's take a look at this all wrapped up and ready for eating. We've got the platter set up with a little extra sauce on the side. Look at the herbs. Look at that steak. It's gorgeous. And the sauce is very easy to make, but you do have to purchase the dark cherry bourbon to make this, guys. So as usual, happy cooking. Let me know if I can help you out.